Welcome back to the Algarve. I hadn't intended doing a review of my ADV350 because I thought it was a bit of a does what it says on the tin sort of bike or scooter and that there wouldn't be much call for a video. But I've received so many requests for one that I thought I'd cobble a quick list of the good and bad points together for you. Now many bikers believe of course that scooters should be banned from the same roads that they use. So if you're one of those then please, please feel free to switch off now and not comment below. For the more enlightened among you, allow me to present the pros and cons of this mid-sized scooter after 600 miles or 1000 kilometers. And I have to say overall, it's a very positive impression. I'll start with the negatives so as to finish on the positives, as overall this is a great little machine. Perhaps surprisingly, there are quite a few negatives, but really they're more minor niggles than deal breaker black marks. First, and I think this is possibly why the aforementioned real bikers don't like scooters, the looks. Now, I think the front of the ADV is okay. It's akin to that magnificent machine that is the new NT1100. But things start going wrong as you move towards the back. No two ways about it, the ADV, like most scooters, has a very large rear end. Taking a closer look at them side by side, you can see that a classic motorcycle like the Triumph Speed Twin has six main components, front wheel, rear wheel, handlebars, fuel tank, engine and seat. And they all sort of fall together in a harmonious, pleasing manner. The problem with scooters is that manufacturers cram a seventh component in and there ain't really enough room. You've still got front wheel, rear wheel, handlebars, fuel tank, engine and seat but also a boot or trunk in the US. And consequently, the engine on the ADV has to sort of cling on to the swing arm like some sort of hemorrhoid emerging from the unmentionables. And things aren't helped by the enormous exhaust on the other side. It's ungainly at best. It's a physically imposing machine too. Just look how bloated it appears next to the lithe speed twin, or could almost say anorexic. The ADV's girth means that it's a bit of a handful for shorter riders. The 795cm seat height is fairly standard in the biking world. The problem is that the ADV is so wide, it's a bit like sitting on a horse, and I can only just get both feet down flat on the ground. Next, the screen. It's a bit short and quite narrow, so wind protection isn't the best. I've fitted this Givre deflector to mine, not very pretty, but it does stop 90% of the wind blast to my head. Fortunately, protection from the cold and wet isn't that important down here in the Algarve, but I understand why buyers in the UK, for example, tend to go for the Forza 350 with its larger electrically adjustable screen if they want a bike for commuting in all weathers. The ADV screen is adjustable, but you need both hands so it can't be done while riding. I've tried, but it requires too much effort and you end up moving the front of the bike around, which when you haven't got your hands on the bars is dangerous. A one-handed mechanism would have been really nice. The hand guards are on the small side, so some wind does creep past, but they're better than nothing and good for giving the impression that this is a branch snapping off-road machine, which it really isn't. Their proeminence does explain why the screen is so narrow. On full lock, a wider screen would simply foul the bars. As with all Hondas, the switch gear is sort of inverted, which is annoying. The horn is where the indicators usually are, and vice versa. Fine if you only ride Hondas, but I literally have to remind myself, if I'm on the Honda or the Triumph, every time I want to turn or use the horn. It's irritating. There's also a lot of real estate given over to the traction control, function and menu buttons on the ADV, which, if I'm honest, I rarely ever use chunkier buttons for the indicators and horn would be a lot more useful. Next on the list of negatives, and don't worry, I'll be getting to, getting to the positives in a moment, um, are the clutch and brake levers. Even for my large hands, they're a bit of a stretch, and as they're not adjustable, the only solution is to fit some aftermarket levers. I ordered some for the Forza 350, but these don't fit because of the handguard mounting brackets, so I've ordered some for the XADE 750, in the hope that they'll work. Compared to a step-through scooter like the flat-floored Honda Vision I've been running for the past four years, getting on and off of the ADV is a bit awkward. I haven't yet decided on how best to do it. Swinging my leg over the back like you do on a motorbike is quite difficult because of the width of the rear end. 
Sometimes I remember my karate days and use what can best be described as a maigiri kick and straddle the centre tunnel. And sometimes I cheat, at least when the bike's on its centre stand, and stand on the running board with my left foot before swinging my right leg over. Once you're on though, it's a very comfortable, spacious place to be. Imagine sitting on a nice, comfortable toilet with the latest edition of your favourite magazine in your hands and 10 minutes of peace and quiet ahead of you. The seat's on the firm side, but it is supportive. I just wish I could shuffle back a bit more. The shape of the seat is dictated by the need to maximise underseat storage, but the bulge for the passenger is a couple of inches too far forward for me. The perfectly flat seat on my Triumph, for example, allows me to shuffle around a bit and stretch my legs, but I'm firmly locked into place on the ADV. The new T-Max from Yamaha gets an adjustable lumbar support cushion thing, which I imagine is really nice. Underseat storage is about 50 litres, similar to the Forza, and that's enough for helmet gloves and general junk when I'm out on my own. If my wife comes along too with her helmet, then it can be a bit tight, but there's no way I'm putting a top case on what is already a graceless rear end. Incidentally, a big thank you to Honda Portugal for not imposing the top case or the Bluetooth connectivity module. In many markets, Italy for example, both of these come with the bike, increasing the sale price by a further thousand euros. I have no need for either and am therefore thankful that I wasn't asked to pay for them. I wish the seat would open a bit wider, there's a good 10 to 15 degrees spare but for some reason Honda won't let the seat open anymore and reaching in to dig out the helmet that close, that's closest to the hinge requires the sort of deftness and flexibility that's in ever shorter supply as the years pass. Exhaust notes, well I always have the greatest difficulty in recording these for you as the microphone picks up the wind a lot more than it does the exhaust. Suffice it to say that with the ADV and all other scooters I've heard the noise is really nothing to write home about. To be blunt, the ADV sounds like a fart, especially under acceleration, and I really don't get why some owners seek to amplify what is essentially a disagreeable noise by fitting aftermarket exhaust. But hey, if you're into loud farts, then knock yourself out. Riding experience? Well, the front brakes could do with a bit more bite, so I fitted these EBC sintered pads, which improve things a bit. I wish Honda had fitted a second disc though, if only to fit in with the slightly sportier pretensions of the ADV compared to the Forza. The single disc setup is okay, but only okay. The feet forward position is nice for a while, but after an hour or so you do begin to feel the strain on your back, as unlike on a motorcycle which allows you to periodically press down on the pegs with your feet to take some of the weight off your spine, you get no leg damping on a scooter. This is common to all feet forward bikes though and is why I didn't get on with the Harley Davidson Sportster when I reviewed that a few months ago. The horizontal running boards are roomy enough but the angled footrests towards the front are a bit short and narrow for my size 10 feet and wind tends to creep around the sides resulting in chilly lower legs and ankles in the winter. But that's it for the minor niggles so before we move on to the positives a word from my sponsor. No, only kidding, none of that here. A word about fuel consumption, which is important at the moment with petrol at €2.20 a litre. I haven't reset any of the measurements since I took delivery of the bike, and over the course of the first 600 miles or 1,000 kilometres, I have averaged 3.6 litres per 100 kilometres, which equates to 78 mpg UK or 65 US. So, roughly half the consumption of your average car but more than double what I was getting with the Little Vision, which gave me 1.6 litres per 100 kilometres, 175 mpg UK, 150 US, and not that far off the 5 litres per 100 kilometres that the considerably more potent Speed Twin 1200 returns. So ever so slightly disappointing on the fuel, although I am hoping this will improve slightly as the engine loosens up. Anyway, on to the things I really like about the ADV350. First off, the price, around €6,200 year, here in Portugal. That's a couple of hundred more than the Forza 350 for which you basically get uh, better suspension and a more modern, more lifestyle appearance with semi-off-road tyres and handguards to make you look all tough and sexy. And indeed, the suspension is very good for a scooter. 
proper full length shower forks like on a real bike uh, these offer more, a more compliant ride and improved handling pity honda lied on all its european websites about having adjustable rear shocks i contacted customer support about this and over the course of a few emails their response has been basically sorry about the mistake but as we don't sell online we can basically say what we want on our websites even if it's not true you should have checked with your dealer to make sure the shocks were adjustable a shameful attitude but what can you do life is short and you need to pick your battles the bars are great just like on a proper bike good leverage and a comfortable upper body position and you can also fit a standard phone holder I know a lot of people don't care for keyless but I think it's great I just leave the key in my riding jacket and never have to worry about it Pity Honda don't also offer knobless ignition too you have to turn this dial to whatever you want to do ignition on off open seat or fuel or lock the bars before you switch on or off the ignition or open the seat or fuel doors using the separate buttons which is a bit long-winded of all the many bikes i've owned the adv is the one my wife enjoys riding pillion on the most the rear seat is very big comfortable and the raised position means she can see over my shoulder more easily all this is important for me as one of the main reasons i run a scooter is for trips down to the beach together again having 50 liters of storage under the seat plus a sort of mini glove box up front an additional cubby hole for tools and a disc lock in the boot and a place for holding documents on the underside of the seat itself is great i don't have any of these on my triumph and it's just so practical for everyday tasks like nipping to the supermarket the post office or the beach i think the biggest plus point though has to be the engine it only produces around 30 horsepower which you would think would be pretty pathetic on a scooter weighing as much as the triumph trident i was running a year ago did but no the twist and go-ness of the scooter honestly makes it feel more like 60 horsepower think of it a bit like an electric car instant throttle response and lots of low down torque make it much faster around town than most cars up to speeds of around 50 miles an hour 80 kilometers an hour you completely dominate the other road users and even at higher speeds the adv can hold its own i've had an indicated 150 kilometers per hour out of it which is about 95 miles per hour obviously it's no track weapon and doesn't pin you back or deprive you of oxygen like a sports bike does but it's ample for most riding situations and not at all bad for only 30 horsepower it certainly feels a lot livelier than the 48 horsepower Royal Enfield Interceptor, for example. The scooter's girth and overall size I refer to in the negatives turns out to be a plus once you're on the open road like here. The ADV offers a lot more road presence than did the very slight vision. And the power, yes I know, only 30 horsepower, but I would urge you to try it, means that generally cars give you respect. There's very little vibration, either through the seat, the footboards, or the handlebars. So unlike the Forza, where they're bolted to the fairing, the bar-mounted PCX-style mirrors don't shake at all. They could do to protrude just slightly more to offer a better view of what's going on behind, but I'm loath to fit extenders, as these would further increase the overall width of the bike. Handling is good, but it did take me a while to adapt, um, despite only having a 15 inch front wheel I initially found turn in a bit slow at least coming from the speed twin I imagine this is due in part to the more laid back rake of the front fork geometry I'm used to it now though and it feels both safe and fun two qualities I look for in any bike fit and finish as always with Honda is excellent except for this wiring here by the left hand grip a bit of cheap floppy rubber vaguely covering up a bunch of connectors and wires not nice oh yes and the single arm hinge mechanism on the glove box in the dash is a bit flimsy but other than that it's a solid piece of work the paint is flawless and seems very thick although i have protected the tunnel and rear side fairings with some 3m film as these are two areas that are very prone to scratching the adv is also available in an anthracite gray and a sort of raspberry red although both of these have a matte finish which is always more difficult to maintain so i went with this silver color which also has the advantage of being a bit cooler to the touch in the long hot summers we get here overall then i have to say i'm delighted with the adv it's affordable practical and surprisingly fast for a 330 cc bike weighing 180 kilos i wouldn't necessarily take it around europe but for running daily errands or commuting to work 
it's pretty much unbeatable and it's very much our go-to vehicle at the moment. Let's have a look how it fares on the rocket score. Unsurprisingly, as they're essentially the same bikes underneath, it scores very similarly to its Forza cousin. An extra point for styling, as I think it just looks a little bit more modern, especially at the front, but it's no Panigale, so 4 out of 10. Quality, another point over the Forza for the better suspension, although I prefer the larger instruments and the screen, of course, of the Forza. They had to use a more compact and old tech LCD affair on the ADV for the instruments because the handguards on full lock once again mean there's not enough space for the bigger instruments. 6 out of 10. The engine is identical to the Forza, so 4 out of, four out of 10. This might not seem like a very good score, but one of the limitations of this scoreboard is that all bikes are lumped together. And if I give the Triumph Rocket a 9 out of 10 for its 2.5 litre monster of an engine, I can't really give the ADV any more than 4. But it is good though, make no mistake. Handling gets a 4 out of 10, it's not bad but it will always be a scooter, fine for zipping around town but not a bike of choice for the track or the mountain twisties. But it gets one more point than the Forza because of the forks. Comfort, pretty much the same as the Forza, only with a more bike-like upper body position and more compliant suspension, but poorer protection from the tiny non-adjustable while on the move screen, which I know is very important to many scooter buyers, means it drops a point, 6 out of 10. Braking is identical, adequate, but I'd really like to see a second front disc, like the Honda gave the CB500X this year, 4 out of 10. Commuting, excellent thanks to the smooth power delivery in town and great luggage space, but it drops a point compared to the Forza because of the small screen, uh, more wind and rain on you, which is not good if this is your only way of getting to work every day. Value, well I think at around €6,000 the Forza and ADV offer really excellent value, especially when you look at the larger capacity scooters maxing out with the appropriately named Yamaha T-Max at an eye-watering 15,000. I mean, you could have the wonderful NT1100 for that. You're still only getting a 330cc engine though, so let's say 7 out of 10. Grin factor. Now this is a difficult one because the scooter is obviously never going to offer the thrills of a motorcycle. It's not designed for that. Is being able to take your wife down to the beach and park within 5 yards of the bar, even at the height of the tourist season, worthy of a grin? I think so, but I'll try and be objective here. It's just a scooter, so 4 out of 10. So the ADV just pips the Forza, which I think is fair. Please remember that the rocket score is just a bit of fun. Comparing a scooter to a Triumph rocket is like comparing a transit van to a Ferrari. It all depends on what you need on the day. Please don't take personal offence if I mark your bike harshly. I just bought myself a Honda ADV 350 that only comes 16th on my own list, which shouldn't make any sense. But if I've managed to convince at least some of you scooter skeptics out there to try it, then I'll be happy. So as always, thanks for watching.